Hi, it's Clinton here from Gold Survival Guide. Today we've got our beginner's guide to technical analysis, looking at gold and silver in New Zealand dollars. Basically using some simple measures that can be seen on charts in terms of trying to help find good entry positions in terms of buying gold and silver in New Zealand dollars. First up, probably the best thing to say is that technical analysis in isolation is of limited value. When markets are being flooded with printed money, they won't necessarily follow historical trends, which in its simplest form is actually what technical analysis basically is, is looking at historical trends and seeing what you can glean for the future. However, when used in conjunction with other indicators, you know, and fundamental analysis, technical analysis does have its place. So say you've done your homework and you've worked out that gold and silver are in long-term bull markets. A good way to do this might be to check out a previous article that we've done, which was called, funnily enough, when will you know it's time to sell gold? Even though it's talking about selling gold, the actual indicators that that, that article talk about um, can be useful in terms of gauging whether now's the right time to be actually buying gold. So we've got the link there for that. So just make a note of that and you can just type that in or you can Google when will you know it's time to sell gold? Chuck an NZ on the end of it and that article should come up at the top of your Google search. But anyway, today, as I've already said, is technical analysis we're looking at. And we're going to cover a couple of basic indicators. One, the 200 day moving average. And the second one is the relative strength index, commonly known as the RSI. Not to be confused with repetitive strain injury which when you stare at these charts for too long, you probably can get. Anyway, first up, uh, we'll look at silver in New Zealand dollars. We've got a six month chart here, up to quite recently in May. You can see the price has gone from well above the 50 day moving average, which is this blue line here, to now well below. In fact, you can see we're only about $4 away from actually hitting the, the 200 day moving average, which is this red line way down here, which silver hasn't been close to for a little while in, in New Zealand dollar terms. And that's often an area, as we've mentioned before, where gold and silver often find support. Anyway, so at the top of the chart here you can see is the RSI and basically it's an indicator of overbought which is here 70 and above or oversold which is down here 30 and below and you can see up here that still silver can actually stay overbought for long periods of time which it's done over the past couple of months it's actually been overbought or close to for a lot of that period of time but then you can also see that in a matter of days, we actually went from overbought up here above 70 right the way down to just touching on oversold at 30. And the other thing you can see is that when uh, the RSI indicator here touched on 30, the silver price actually bottomed out and actually rose there following that. So you can see here if we go on to a longer term chart now. I'm still looking at silver but this is a longer term three year chart. You can notice that when the RSI hits 30, which are here signified by all these little pretty green circles, this pretty much coincided with the silver price actually bottoming out as well, shown by these other circles down here. You can see that generally the price actually rose uh, when the RSI touched on or went below 30. Uh, was this the case 100% of the time? No, nothing's perfect and there is the exception which proves the rule as they say. You can see here back in uh, mid-August 2008 the RSI went below 30 and then the price turned up. But then you can also see the RSI actually having turned up also turned back down and went into oversold again and the price actually dropped even lower than what it had before and it actually continued to drop even further you can see that it actually took a couple of months till about October when it was some um, 
sort of probably three to four dollars lower for it to actually the price to actually bottom out. But the point is that buying on an oversold RSI when you're within the confines of a bull market, which probably be fair to say that judging by steadily rising prices that silver is probably in, it can generally make for a pretty good entry position in the longer term. On this chart you'll also notice that apart from mid to late 2008, back in here, the price generally found support when it touched on that 200 day moving average that we spoke about earlier, that red line here. You can see generally the price sort of touched on it or it didn't dip too far below it and then you know, would, would generally rise again. As I said again there is the exception to every rule. Nothing can be taken for granted in the precious metals world. And you can see here that in 2008 it did touch on the 200 day moving average but it proceeded to fall mightily past it. And the 200 day moving average was at about probably about $22 or thereabouts then. You can see it actually continued to fall over the next couple of months and actually didn't bottom out until it hit 15 so did drop about $9. The flip side to that is that from there it actually rose and so it probably only took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, basically within 6 months you were back in the positive and you can see it actually rose pretty steadily up there getting up close to 30. So now on to gold in New Zealand dollars got another a six month sort of shorter term chart and the RSI also often indicates a bottoming of the New Zealand dollar gold price as can be shown in the, the chart here we went into oversold the price also bottomed out at that time conversely you can see when the price gets into overbought territory up here above the 70 this often coincides with a, the price topping out and generally correcting after that which you can see it did here from going in the up close to what 1975 dropping down to 1850 so a correction of some $125 over the over the next month basically if we go into an even longer term chart as well for gold you can see that the 200 day moving average historically has shown support for the, the price of gold in New Zealand dollars as well as shown by all these green lines here see that here's the 200 day moving average, the red line. The price generally sort of bottoms at, touches off that and finds support or bottoms soon after it. Again there is the exception to every rule and we look back into uh, what was it sort of mid 2009 where the price actually was at 1500 New Zealand dollars. When it touched on the 200 day moving average it continued to drop down to about 1375 but again it didn't take too many months it's probably about six months later until it actually started to to rise again and it was inside of nine months the you know the price was up from 1500 to you know, 1600 or thereabouts so but you can see since then it's only sort of briefly dipped below the the 200 day moving average so it can generally be a, a useful indicator so basically if you're in the long for the long haul then using some simple technical analysis indicators like these two can be useful in determining some lower risk entry points. Just remember they're not foolproof, which is why it's worth considering what we'd call averaging in, which is simply buying in tranches when you get close to you know what you've identified might be a buying zone or a price that you'd like to buy it. So basically once the price is dipped consider taking an initial position and then buying more regularly after this. You should also just note that if you want to try and recreate these charts just head to stockcharts.com just type in into the little box that it gives you there dollar gold colon dollar nzd and that'll just give you the the same chart and you can adjust the time scale and do all sorts of stuff on there and, and it's all it's all free basically. So anyway, hopefully that's been of use. To learn more about buying gold and silver in New Zealand, then come and visit us at goldsurvivalguide.co.nz. 
or if you're actually ready to buy, then give us a call for a free quote on gold or silver. 0800 888 gold or 0800 888 465. We're happy to help and make the process as simple as possible for new buyers of gold and silver. Thanks a lot for listening.